Welcome back to Hermitcraft Mod Sauce 2 Building on Beef Nobilis Gaming. I am Alex Beefna. I have missed you guys. I have been so very heckin' busy, it's not even funny. But anyway, okay, I, I might have kind of gone ham off camera. Let's put some lights up here. There we go. I might have kind of gone a little nuts off camera on the power plant. Okay, so all of this in here is subject to change. These chests here are actually connected. I pulled up all the rails. The whole rail system just wasn't working. To two chests in the recycling plant. Non-compostable food waste and burnable trash. I don't know that I have any burnable trash. Well, there we go. Off it goes. So this, um, I'm not sure I'm going to keep the chests. But that go is going to go to, uh, it's going to feed sterling generators. Yeah, let's just get rid of that because that ain't legit. That's going to feed sterling generators. This one is going to feed culinary generators. Um, I'm probably going to have a couple more rows of capacitor banks here. And no, this one is already uh, filling up. How? The meat of the power plant, of course, the good old-fashioned standby redneck reactors. I have one that I've built out all together just so you can see it, uh, how we're going to do it. I have entirely too much crap in my inventory. Um, that's okay. So yeah, I notice I dig these, uh, I dug these a little shallower than I normally do the redneck reactors because I want part of it to be visible. Well, as visible as that is, which, you know. Anyway. Am I? Yeah, I got that in the right place. Okay. So I'm using this uh, chisel hex plating. It looks cool. It looks futuristic. It looks like some kind of uh, carbon fiber insulation stuff. Which, you know, we want to keep as much heat as possible in the reactor pits. Because it's got to make the heat generators go. Yes, you notice I have a heat generator and lava right here in my hand um, in creative. Okay, so how, how this works, how on these uh, the split creative and survival plays work. Simple things like the mechanism heat generator. Oh god. I Look, look how cheap this is, okay? Once I've made a fair quantity of them in survival, um, arbitrarily decided, <laughs> of course, I'm free to spawn it in in creative. Stuff like the sterling generator, stuff like cat banks, that stuff's all pretty cheap. So I've made a number of those things already legit. So I... Oh, like over in the other power plant, in the original power plant in Old Town, yeah, um, I've made enough of those legit. I think I can be excused. Uh, I, th I think I was in the way there. I think I can be excused. I think it's okay if I cheat in some, you know, reactors that are made out of sticks and rocks and stuff. <laughs> so, uh, the, uh, power plant itself has, well... Obviously, it, it's going to be running, you know, cable to workshops and stuff around here. But there's another thing I'm going to put up. I'm going to put up uh, charging stations around town. And I'll be running cable from the power plant to those charging stations. Okay, I don't know what you're talking about, but... Uh, okay... using what what is this steel frame glass from chisel okay looks cool and these technical blocks i'm using the same block for the wall and it cool it's it's cool it like it like bolts on all right how did i yeah that's how i did all up along there so it it doesn't look like it's just sitting there it looks like it's it's actually part of the structure. And you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to cap this off. It's okay. 
it's okay, it's fine, I can do that right now. There we go. And there we go. Now we got two reactors up. And they're feeding this bunch of cat banks right here. Now, if I'm, eh? Oh, okay, okay, I, I, okay, um, hmm. One number saying 92, th is it trying to feed the other one? Oh God, we went through this over in the other power plant, didn't we? All right, you insert, you extract, all right, and you insert, okay, and now Okay, what what has happened? Why no work? Oh, because it it uh, it's all going. It should all be going up here. There we go. There we go. That's it. That that's it. That's it. Okay, problem solved. Let's let's get back to work. <laughs> See, so yeah, I, I might have sort of missed a little with the elevator here. It's fine. It's okay. It's all good. All right, give me my conduit back. Uh, da -da -da. And once I get to where I, I make better conduit legit, I might come in here and redo it. But really, with the redneck reactors, I, they don't really have the power output to need. The fancy cable, uh, that's that's going to be infrastructure level stuff. That's going to be power lines outside. Of course, we're not going to have power lines on poles because in a storm, they blow down and you lose power. And that's dumb. Um, really, people, buried power lines, buried phone lines, that's the way to go. That's how we do things here in the 21st century. That's... That's the, uh, that's the Beefnopolis way, is to not do dumb crap. <laughs> Oops. So, what have I been doing while I've been away? Well, I've been working my butt off at my day job. Uh, fortunately, busy season is now over. And I can get back to doing things I enjoy. I, can, I have free time of my own again. It's great. It's rad. <laughs> uh, I have actually had some time to draw and doodle and crap while I was working. Uh, it's easier to just kind of sit down and draw for a couple hours a night than it is to bang out a video. So I did finish one... Whoops. Oh god, what did I just do? Okay. I finished Red Sector A. I finished the uh, the Rush fan comic that I was working on. I've gotten back to work on Tales of Beefnopolis, the prologue. And I am very, very happy to be working on this again. So hopefully I ought to have a new page of that out before too long. I will also be working on, a, uh, as time allows, a Tales of Beefnopolis side story called Zucchini Apocalypse. Which is exactly what it says on the tin. It's uh, a story about the boundless generosity of the vegan tribe. Particularly during zucchini season. And of course, all this is going to be explained in the comic. But uh, in the vegan tribe, you, you can either be born into the vegan tribe or naturalized into the vegan tribe. Uh, but you're not recognized as a full adult member until you have planned and planted and harvested your first garden. I, you don't have to ever garden again after that, but they do want you to learn where your food comes from and how to respect it. Which I think we could all stand to do a little bit, but anyway. So you have the, uh, the young and the newly naturalized vegan tribes people and they plan their gardens. 
and they take their garden plans to their elders for review and are told, okay, um, we're not going to uh, micromanage here. We're not going to uh, control what you do, but trust us on this one. We very strongly recommend no more than one zucchini plant. One, one, number one in a parentheses. Okay, well, whatever. Uh, so the new and uh, young and newly naturalized vegan tribes people hit up Mycopedia and do a little bit of research and they find out that a zucchini plant yields about 8 to 10 pounds of zucchini. Well, that doesn't sound like much. Maybe two plants. So they get out there and they start planting and they, uh, they get a little carried away and oops, I accidentally a whole row of zucchini seedlings. Eh, whatever, it's fine. So the, the, the zucchini grows, and as uh, if you've ever tried to grow zucchini, you know that you grow zucchini by putting the seedlings in the ground and then standing back. Because uh, <laughs> it, she's going to blow. So they, uh, they, they harvest their first bushel of zucchini, and they're proud of themselves. And uh, oh yeah, the thing, uh, another thing about zucchini is it's something called a cyclical producer, which once you pick it um some plants once you pick the fruit or the bed you know the f the fruit as i use as a blanket term here once you pick the fruit that's it it doesn't grow anymore zucchini is not one of those zucchini is again what i call what we call a cyclical producer which means if you pick the thing it will produce more to replace the thing that you picked and it will continue to do this as long whoops, as weather conditions allow it to, or as long as its season allows it to. So, they get their first zucchini harvest, and it's great, it's wonderful. And they get another zucchini harvest, okay, um, that, that's great, that's nice, but, but this is enough zucchinis now. And they go out again. And the zucchinis are back. This is too many zucchinis. Why won't the zucchinis stop? So they try to pawn them off on their friends. They try to pawn them off on their neighbors. But no, They're, the new, the young and newly naturalized neighbors are dealing with their own zucchini problem. And the uh, more experienced vegan tribes people are not dealing with this problem at all. And they're going, nah, bruh, because <laughs> they know better and they zucchinied responsibly. So then, in a panic, all these young and newly naturalized vegans tribe people, okay, this, this needs to go, uh, run and email their elders in a panic, um, going, oh god, what do I do? To which their elders basically respond, we warned you about zucchini, bro, we told you, dog, but it keeps happening. So, so, um, they gotta do something with all this zucchini. So what do they do? They start loading up wagons and they foist it off on literally, whoops, I needed that, the rest of the world, the whole rest of the world. Because there will be a time of year when people see a vegan train, vegan tribe wagon train coming and they just fear because they know what's on that train. They know what those wagons are carrying. They know they're gonna get stuck with it and they know there's nothing they can do about it. Because they're just so darn nice about it, you know? You hate to turn it down. Okay, Isaac, you gotta get out of here, okay? I, I don't like listening to you make noise out here. Okay. So, you know, town guards are telling little white lies about barbecue cook-offs in the town square and all the roads are closed and uh, everything smells like meat anyway and you don't really don't want to go through there. But it never works. It never works. And the town's town guards get a nice big fat bag of zucchini for their trouble. So, <laughs> so um, you know, I'm, I'm going to try a thing here. So, yeah. Uh, again, the culinary generator is cheap enough uh, th this one is. Um, I haven't built one of these or one of these yet. Once I do, I'll come in. Well, we, we might make that a project in... Uh, oh yeah, that connects. Okay, we might make that a project in um, 
survival. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. The, you know, the not the not building. Um, we might make that a project. Um, actually, here's what we might do. <laughs> Let's make a, a culinary reactor here. Ah, oh, shiznat. Um, I need uh, cable. I'm gonna rip some of this off from down here. It's fine. There we go. Oh wait, um, that's not what I needed. I needed conduit, not cable. Yeah, I actually ran a whole bunch of quote-unquote cable <laughs> down down in the uh, reactor room, and it was it was uh, item conduits, and that doesn't work. Insert. 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 So that should be enough. Um, that should be enough. Three culinary generators should be enough to make uh, make stuff go, right? Okay. Now, I was going to go dump the zombie meat in there, but we need... Um, we need something to store the power first. Okay. Hmm, I'm not sure I like that. Um, I might put a bank of uh, sterling generators here with the conduits underneath feeding them is what I might do. I wonder if I shouldn't put this underground. Here, give me that back. Now, the thing about Ender IO conduits is they connect up like that. You can have item and energy conduits occupying the same space plugged into the same side isn't that awesome remember with the uh industrial craft 2 ic2 junk remember how that used to work remember what a pain in the butt that was to uh arrange your conduits okay well that that'll do for now uh then i've got to arrange some uh, sterling generators but Let's see, I've, I've got three, I, I have three foods. Well, I have two foods, two different foods. I have uh, meat and bacon. So, okay, I hear them running, so they should both be running. There should be two culinary generators running. Not you, okay, that one's running. That one's running on bacon. Okay. And it's feeding the cat bank. Cool. Okay. I'm just... God, that looks cool. <laughs> so I usually... I, I put these mostly underground and then cap them off just for safety reasons. But the redneck reactor really is cool to look at. And it's it's really easy to dress up really really nice in, uh, in creative, too are just aesthetically, you know, you know, it's nice, it's clean, safe power, it's maintenance free. I mean, unless some idiot gets down here and bangs on the glass with a hammer, um, in which case um, the problem will solve itself quickly as the lava engulfs the idiot. <laughs> okay, so next week, I think we might... I think uh, I've done all of this building that I'm going to do in creative, because really all I need to do is rearrange and plop down sterling generators. Uh, I'm thinking maybe next week we'll get back to work on the life spring. Um, do some more stuff over here. Because I have got an awful lot of stuff to do on the life spring. I, I have the life spring proper built, I'll show you. But I don't have any of the facilities that go with it. So, um, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that. We'll deal with that another time. Okay, folks, I'm going to go do some work, and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Wait, uh, that's a hammer. I said, no, nah, damn it. Ah, uh, that's like the second time this series. She isn't that. Ah, uh, give me all my stuff.